Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger ramp deck. So we're not trying to cheat Ulamog in play with Luka or by reanimating it, we're actually trying to hardcast the 10 mana Legendary Eldrazi, and we get a 10 10 indestructible creature that when we cast it, so even if it gets countered, we get to exile two target permanents, including lands. And when Ulamog attacks, defending player has to exile the top 20 cards of their library. So even if the opponent chum blocks Ulamog, they will probably die to two or three attacks. So a very powerful finisher, but it is pricey at 10 mana. So we'll need a lot of ramp to help us uh, cast Ulamog. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana, we've got two copies of Arboreal Grazer, which can put an extra land into play, and four copies of Lenor Elves. We do want as much land-based ramp in the deck as possible, because we do have some mana doubling effects, which care about the number of lands we have in play. So we don't want to be playing too many mana creatures, but Lenor Elves is just too good not to play as a one mana accelerant. Then we've got the full play set of Growth Spiral to put an extra land in play and draw cards. Then at 3 mana we've got Elvish Rejuvenator, which can take a look at the top 5 cards to put a land into play tapped, and then also gives us a 1-1 body to maybe chum block with, protect our Planeswalker, and uh, help us get to the late game. And then we've got 2 copies of Uro, which can help us ramp by putting an extra land in play, gains a bit of life, draws a card, and later we can also escape it out of the graveyard by exiling 5 other cards. At 4 mana we've got the full playset of Migration Path, which can search up two basic lands to put on the battlefield tapped, and can also cycle for 2 mana in the late game if we don't need to ramp anymore and just need to draw more action. Then at 5 mana we've got our mana doubling effects with the full playset of Nissa who shakes the world, which doubles up the mana produced by our forests, can also untap a land with the plus 1 and turn it into a 3-3, so that also adds 2 mana if we untap a forest and so it can also double up as a win condition, and then the minus 8 can also search up all our forests and make our lands indestructible, so a very powerful planeswalker in any ramp deck, and then two copies of Mirari Swake to complement Nissa as another card that was added in the recent anthology expansion, giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1 and doubling the mana produced by our lands, and then our finishers, four copies of Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, and four copies of Hydroid Crisis as another powerful mana sink that will help us draw a bunch of cards, gain a bit of life, and make a flying trampling jellyfish hydra beast. And then the mana base, 26 lands total. We've got four copies of Fable Passage to search up six basic forests, one island or one plains. Also need plenty of basics to search up with Migration Path, and the Fable Passage will help with escaping Uro. Then we've got four Breeding Pool and four Temple Gardens, so we've got a total of 14 forests, and then uh, four Fable Passage to search up forests to synergize with Nyssa, then four Hinterland Harbor, which will come into play untapped most of the time, and two copies of Castle Garenbrick, which can also potentially help us ramp into Ulamog or Hydroid Crisis. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. We're on the play. No early ramp. But I do have Migration Path into Nyssa. This one's close. Would definitely be a snap keep if one Crisis is something that ramps on two or three. I'll try it. Can always cycle Migration Path if needed. Turn one gutter bones. Could be a mono blank devotion deck. A remorse. All right, guess we'll let that happen. Takes Migration Path. Not a bad draw. Alright, so we found the early ramp. Next turn I can play Rejuvenator or with the Lance Nissa. Double Knights. 
Alright, that's pretty scary. Now I guess we'll play Nissa then. I'll still have a one loyalty Nissa. Just gonna murder Strider to Nissa. Fair enough. Didn't think I want to be attacking, even though I could kill Knight and Gutter Boons. Just want to start casting Crisis. Very close to escaping Uro as well. And Crisis for four. There's Frexen Obliterator. So we'll need to cast Ulamog to get rid of that. For now I can go Double Rejuvenator or I can play Krasis. If they have another Agonizing Remorse, I might be better off playing Krasis now. Although I could set up for an even bigger Krasis next turn if we wait. Which might be worth it. I'll keep Grazer in hand for now. Shepherd. Okay. Opponent considering the attack with Obliterator. Doesn't go for it. Alright, so Krasis can attack. Opponent trades. And we can crisis for eights. All right, so if we draw Ulamog, we can cast him. Can escape Uro as well. And Grey Merchant for nine, puts us to 16. So just want to prioritize and drawing cards here, but I'll probably get Nissa in play first. Typically want to avoid tapping too many forests. This seems fine. Not a crisis, pretty good. Yeah, I'll play crisis now. I don't think we need to wait until next turn. Crisis for eleven. Still no Ulamogs. I'm not dead to another Grey Merchant. And we're killing them with Krasis next turn. Unless they gain some life, which they did. I'm at 9. Grazer's a pretty good blocker for Obliterator at least. Oh, 
Well, if they have a third Grey Merchant, we could be in trouble. Although, let's see, points at 22, they're taking 19 in the air, so I still need to deal 3 damage somehow. They've got 5 blockers. Block, 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 so yeah, we're not necessarily killing them here. But I can maybe force them to lose a bit of devotion, which is also worthwhile. But let's start by drawing cards first, since we might draw into an Ulamog here, as we did. And that should make things a lot easier. And I'm pretty sure we can attack for lethal now. Three blockers, block, 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 take five plus 19. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand facing Gigantha. I'm not sure what that implies. Turn 3, Nissa coming up. If our elf survives, that is. Alright, stinking. Could cycle this path, which I probably don't need to cast at this point with Nissa in play. Yeah, if they can put two more counters on the Steamkin, then they could do some powerful things. Another Steamkin instead. No attacks, let's cycle. And then, um, I guess, play Rejuvenator. Probably want to fetch after we play Rejuvenator. At least the Fable Passages are helping with Uro. So I'll still play the Passage over uh, Temple Garden here. Could also animate Fable Passage, that way I have the option of sacking it if it's about to die. Also, if I want to sack it anyways to fuel Uro, I'll lose a 3-3. Maybe it's worth it here. It's kind of a cute play. Don't think it's quite worth it to run second Nissa out there. Alright, so opponents an Arclight Phoenix deck. And they've got access to a lot of mana here with double Steamkin. So they could definitely go off this turn. Another Tormenting Voice, second Phoenix discarded, so... My Nissa's probably gonna die. First strike means no good blocks on the Steamkins. Of course, don't mind jumping with the Rejuvenator. Yep, 
Yeah, they can probably cast their entire hand at this point with the mana from Steamkin. Yeah, let's chum block with Rejuvenator. Force them to use a burn spell to finish off Nissa. That way if we do top deck Krasis or Ulamog, we can still maybe cast it with the mana doubling from Nissa. Chigantha. Still three mana available. And Nissa gets shocked. Yeah, it's not looking good here. Need to top deck Hydroid Crisis. Not too close to casting Ulamog now. And there goes my land. So three more mana available if they want to. At least I can escape Uro. Which seems better than playing Nissa at this point. Could go Nissa into Uro. Although Nissa's just gonna die to Phoenix. I guess it soaks up a bit of damage. But I might draw something more useful with Uro. Mirari's Wake. Alright, that could be somewhat useful. Unlike Nissa doesn't die to the Phoenix attacks, so if we top deck Ulamog, we could potentially cast it and exile those Arclight finishes. Sprite Dragon explains the blue splash. Take seven. So Nissa's gonna die, soak up a bit of damage, but now we're in great shape if we top deck Krasis or Ulamog. And there's Krasis, perfect. Float all our mana. So X equals 12 is probably enough. And there's Ulamog waiting. Can cast path. Do I need an extra blocker here? Eh, let's cast it anyway. Hopefully no act of treason shenanigans. Tormenting voice to keep digging. Yeah. 
No attacks. Exile our client Phoenix and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, that was a pretty swingy game, had a good start, opponent was coming back, and then we had a good sequence of ramp into Krasis and an Ulamog to close out the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's missing maybe a mana doubling effect or another ramp card, but I don't think we can mulligan. Can always play small Hydroid Krasis just to draw a card or two. And we've got a pretty good start with Grazer and Spiral. So I guess the ideal sequence is drawing a land and then Migration Path. Something along those lines. Alright, another Growth Spiral works too. Opponent on Gruul. Carry at it, so opponent's also ramping nicely. Alright. Land's perfect, now we get to play a 4-4 Krasis. Next turn, land plus elf, and we're inching closer to Ulamog. Annex. Opponent could be on a Winota deck. Ooh, migration path. Alright, so next turn, we'll definitely get to cast Ulamog. Probably doesn't matter too much which lands we get at this point. I'll keep the Krasis back for now. Perforos, alright. Might have to get rid of Perforos instead. Fetch before we draw to thin out the deck a bit. Uro's decent too, but Ulamog's even better. Yeah, I should probably get rid of Perforos and then let's get rid of Ancient Ziggurats. And then the plan is just to attack with Ulamog two or three times. Torbran, okay. How many cards in Graveyard? Four, so pretty close to escaping uh, Uro. Maybe I can uh, try and suicide my Lanor Elves just to put it in the graveyard. Although my opponent will probably take it, so we'll just keep it back to chump with. Elf chumps Ulamog. Clothis. It's pretty effective against my Uro, but we should be able to escape it if we can put an extra card in graveyards, which we can here. So I'll probably take the rests. I'll jump with a grazer. Mirari's Wake, pretty nice too.
and Anissa for a good measure. So, how many creatures can I afford to attack with? Opponent's got 27 cards remaining, and 12 life. Yeah, I'll just send Ulamog, seems safer. Just attack with Ulamog twice. They can block with their indestructible god. But we should have enough stuff on defense. Although Clothis plus Torbrand is also kind of nice. Dracoseth. Alright. So that's what they were trying to cheat into play with Perforos. And uh, just gotta make sure we don't die. Alright, and our opponent concedes. We get to untap, attack with Ulamog, exile the remaining cards in their library, and our opponent will be dead before they get a chance to take their turn. Yeah, that was a pretty fun game. Just enough mana to hardcast our Ulamog. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent hands. Facing Umori, so it could definitely be a Winota deck. Stomping ground definitely points towards it. Um, both Uro and Rejuvenator makes sense here. I guess we'll lead with Rejuvenator. And then getting more Fable Passages is good for escape. Stinking. Alright. Maybe not a Winota deck after all. Crisis. So this turn we just want to ramp and then next turn cast a big Crisis. So let's uh, Uro. So I want to get one island, a forest and a plains. Alright, get in for one. Next turn we can craze this for five at least. Goblin Chamberler, alright. Pretty good. Although it does make it easier to escape Uro now. Hmm, Migration Path. Do I want to Migration Path? Or I can play Krasis for four. Or I can escape Uro. A lot of good options. Kind of like escaping Uro here. Alright, perfect. Now we get to Grow Spiral. And then maybe uh, play Crisis next turn. Could cycle the path end of turn here. And there's Ulamog, which we're very close to casting, especially with his Mirarius Wake. Alright, we'll pass. Could also play a small Krasis for uh, four here. Doesn't seem needed. And given that they are a Nomori deck, we don't need to worry about any removal spells. 
I guess if they're a goblin deck, maybe they could have Volley Veteran or Jump Home Incinerator. Alright, so they are a goblin deck with Steamkin. Goblins do sometimes struggle in the two-drop slot, so I guess Steamkin makes some amount of sense. Goblin Matron gets Skirk Prospector, which can generate a lot of mana here. So we might see them empty most of their hands. And yeah, those Steamkins are putting in work. Not a ringleader. Well, it's looking more and more like I should have just played a small crisis. Gel Palm Incinerator will be able to take out Ura most likely. The Omori discount also definitely a big deal. War Chief to give everyone hastes and more discounts. Yeah, we might be dead here in a surprising turn of events. They definitely have enough goblins to kill Uro with the Jump Palm. And then they might have some goblin lords to pump up the team. They still have Prospector to make mana and Steamkin. Hopefully they're out of uh, the draw effects. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're dead if they just attack with everyone here. Maybe they're afraid of Settle the Wreckage. Because we do have double Y technically with this Mirarius Wake. So maybe they're hatching their bets or just presenting lethal without overextending. Would definitely love to get another turn. But yeah, I think we're dead. Well, this game definitely took a surprising turn of events. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with what looks like a reasonable keep. It's not perfect having two Ulamogs in our opening hands, not where we want to be. But we do have Rejuvenator into Nyssa, hopefully. We'll try it. Turn to Adonto Vanguard. Could be a Winota deck. Opponent stuck on two lands, that gives us a chance. Grab a castle. Turn for Nyssa. Although we don't have a ton of forests in play, maybe I should have been prioritizing playing my forests for Nyssa here. To double our mana for Ulamog. Makes Adanta Vanguard indestructible. Are they fighting or reckless raging? 
So maybe it's a Boros Feather deck. Another Rejuvenator. I'll play Nissa. And then animate a non-forest in case it dies. And yeah, we could cast Ulamog if the harbor survives. Vanguard going face. Opponent still stuck on mana. Opponent had two lands, they're about to have zero. Alright, did not expect this game to end this way, but uh, here we are. On to the next one. We're on the draw, facing a Yorion deck, and we've got a pretty good hand. Just missing a curve topper like Krasis or Ulamog eventually. Opponent on an Esper version. Oath of Kaya kills my elf. Probably do want to get a second island for uh, Uro purposes. And I am going to want to animate the breeding pool so I can still spiral. Or I guess I could just uh, animate basic forest and play elf. I guess that's reasonable too. And then hope to draw something juicy. Right on might be a bad idea. All right, there's something juicy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we can cast Ulamog here. And let's exile some lands. Can even attack down to Ferry. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Well, definitely mission accomplished for today. My plan was to hard cast Ulamog a bunch, and I think we did it in almost every game, so. Yeah, pretty fun deck if you're into hard casting Ulamog instead of uh, cheating it into play. Getting that cast trigger to exile to permanence is definitely very relevant. And if the opponent then bounces or Ulamog, we have all the mana in the world to replay it. So that's not an issue. All right, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.